Hi, Katrina. Hi. This is a great place to um, to meet each other. That's exactly what I was going to say. Did you ever imagine that the first time we're going to sit across each other and talk about each other's lives is going to be recorded? Um, no, <coughs> I think uh, next time someone uh, asks me that, I will realize that it's potentially can be very difficult, but I think it's a good place to um, get to know someone, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> on camera, sure. <laughs> yeah, should, should we start? I think so. We should play the... Are you going first? Go we, I mean, we actually have should to we just do it press together? the play right. button. Yeah. Okay. Katrina Kaif and Vicky Kaushal, welcome to Tapecast. You've both had a fascinating journey to start up, and we look forward to discovering the route to your drive and motivation. Vicky, will you pick the first question? Sure. I will uh, start with family. Your sister Isabel is also joining films. What advice would you give her as learnings from your past mistakes? Mistakes? Mm. <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> mistakes. Um, so I think what I felt in the beginning that I was trying to do with her was kind of make her do everything that I had done. And I was trying mm -hmm. to kind of advise her almost very similarly into all the things and all the routes that I had kind of taken in my life and thinking that, okay, this is, I don't even think I did it consciously. It just was happening. A similar plan. And then a similar plan, yeah. thinking, okay, this is the way, this is the kind of way that I know and this mm, is the way that, mm. you know, I think will work for her to be successful. And then now she's been here for about, I think, eight or nine months. The best thing I can do for her as a sister is allow her to discover her own voice and allow mm -hmm. her to discover who she is rather than trying to make her into, you know, a person who I think, you know, works for, for this industry or for any, any industry. Authenticity is yeah. always what works. Always. She's shooting for a film right now? No, she's um, just about completed a film, which she's... Oh, um, she's already? Oh, yeah, she's wow. kind of just about in completion for a film she's done. Wow. So. Best wishes to her. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now I'm picking um, a question for you. The general consensus seems to be that what works in your favor is your boy next door vibe, that you're approachable, reachable, and attainable. But as you become more successful, how do you continue to be these things? I guess by not taking success to your head, uh, to let that be a sinking feeling than a feeling that you get comfortable with. Uh, I, to be very honest, I, I know I've been uh, able to be part of good films and films that have made me reach out to a wider audience. I still go to cafes and malls and restaurants and do the same things that I used to do a year back. So, uh, and it's, and it's also, sometimes you have to realize that they, all they want also is just a couple of seconds of, from your life. You know, all they ask for is a selfie, all they do is like pay like a compliment to you. That's all they do. And uh, I guess, I guess I'll just lose myself if I lose all those things, you know, just, just that, that, relatability because that also I feel is an asset to me as an actor. Uh, you really need to have uh, people around you who really kind of firstly know you for who you are, not the actor or not the professional side of you, but just who you are and keep bringing you back to your reality. You know, sometimes it's just my mom mm. who will just see a certain change in the walk in one well, fine day, and no, stop. she'll just she'll just be playing on a Sudoku <laughs> in the newspaper, and she'll just be looking at me, staring at me, and she'll just be. So, ठीक है, star बन गया, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> so you know, so I I just it's also a lot to do with the people you're surrounded with, and uh, just just keep just be focused on your work. That's it. You know, I am the same Vicky Kaushal that I was. It's just okay. They just like me for my performances in the past few films, so they. You know, I'm getting all that love and affection, which I'm very grateful of. But uh, I should just be, I mean, this is the time I know that I can't take things for granted. Yeah, you know, that's I the biggest mistake to, people yeah, do. They yeah. lose focus on what it was that yeah. was working for them. And also there's this, you know, there's this beautiful poem called If by Rudyard Kipling. Success and failure, just the same. Just the same. And just, th there's this beautiful word. He's called success and failure as imposters, which yeah. is so true. Yeah. Which is so true, you know, and if you learn how to treat both of them the same, that's the trick. So, and I treat, 
I genuinely try to do that. Try to treat success or the times when I was genuinely just knocking around doors and just trying to meet people and asking for work. But aren't those just such great times when you look back at them? Oh, or, or do you no, find it that... It scares me. Oh, it does? Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, it makes me value mm. my present even more. Mm. Uh, because uh, that time, actually, it was fun. When That's I was what, doing that, yeah, yeah, when you're doing being that, a part of that grind, yeah, you're just free, you're fearless, you're just like, you're you know... You're fearless because there's nothing to lose. You have nothing, nothing to lose, there to lose. You know? And you're, the just, part, yeah. you're just doing it for the love of what you want to do. Mm. And uh, now, it just when you look back at it, it's just, uh, it just makes you value this time even mm. more, you know, and that's why you just don't end up taking it for granted. Mm. I like what you said about your mom. I think she sounds like she's a very wise woman. And she checks she you out and says, mm. got my eye on you. That's important. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a question <clears throat> for you. Play. Karan Johar recently declared that it's the age of the actor and not the age of the star anymore. You've been a star for more than a decade. What is your response to that? I think it's always been the age of the actor. I think there is no such thing as a generic star. Mm -hmm. I genuinely feel that. No, I don't believe it's possible for any actor in mm -hmm. the public persona to sustain for a very long period of time the public's interest unless they have been able to hold them mm -hmm. by the craft that they are doing. Right. Earlier, it was just you and your movies. Hmm. The audience didn't see you on Absolutely. platforms. They saw you on Friday in the cinema. Absolutely. And that was, for me, the majority of... Um, of for, it's been that way for the majority of the films that I've done. N everyone values their time, and everyone, you know, kind of wants to come... They come to the cinema to be engaged or entertained or to, be, to feel a certain way. So if what you're doing is holding them, then that means that they are connecting to something that you're saying. I think the probably the best way for me to put it is beyond the points a little bit like what you said, I don't really take it all too seriously. Right. I don't sit here and open a book and say, okay, now this is the age of the actor and now people are doing these kind of roles and now people are doing these kind of roles and in the last X years, this, this is what I've done and am I more of a popular star or am I more of this or am I... Right. I, don't, I don't bifurcate it like that. Yeah. It's not my job to tell you what I am. Right. It's your job to see me and as what, what decide I as. what I do for you. Correct. I, I think that you just can't take all the, the, the responsibility, the credit, the pressure, the acknowledgement, and think that it's all us that are doing yeah. it. So I don't get too particular into which tag and who is this yeah. star and who's a superstar and at one point you're a superstar and now it's the age of this person and oh my god what will we do and where will, you know yeah. like I don't I don't get into that I just try and um, I try and remain like I think for you you said it's your family that keep you grounded and you have those people around you who, who tell you that I try and just keep coming back to where's my center and what's true for me however that you know however I find that center for me hmm and see what is exciting to me right. at this point. There was a kind of a phase recently where I realized that in a particular genre, I was not happy when I was there anymore. And it was a space that I had done for a long time. Okay. And all of a sudden, I just kind of had this, this, this um, really overwhelming feeling that this particular kind of, um, say, uh, you know, projection, which is required for this genre, was not, it was not exciting to me anymore. Mm. And simply as basic as the fact that I've done it. I've right. done it now. Right. So now, it, for me, the well, only thing I'm trying to do is look for things that excite me. Right. After a certain amount of time, you've also Correct. done and you've seen many of the beats. Right. You've seen all the beats that are there. So now what's going to challenge you? And for me, I realized right now, I think it's the places where I feel that I'm learning something. Wow. Where I feel that I'm learning something new. Either the director is teaching me, or even if the director is just the person capturing it, it's the people I'm trying to gather around me who are working with me. Yeah. Do they have something I can learn? Can they teach me something new? So that for me is how I've made this chapter in my life exciting for me is by trying to see where can I change things up? Where can I make it new for myself? And if I feel if it's new for me and interesting for me, then the audience will continue with you on that journey. How is it for you to kind of gauge that? Because that shift from knocking doors to this literally superstar that you became and just that shift, how was that for you? 
It's because it was so gradual, I think. It's exactly right. what you said. And there are a lot of people who are in our industry who are my colleagues that came in around the same time right. as me. And they came with that one big grand launch film and all the magazines said, you know, next big thing, this thing. And you have those people. But for me, it wasn't like that. It was one smaller role in a film, then one small thing, then this, then wow. that. For me, though, I do remember the first time that I had gotten like a lot of, um, you know, when you notice that people are speaking a lot of acknowledgement or praise about something was a film called Namaste London. Yes. That was the first time that I think people, I felt that, oh, you know, yes. oh, this, is, this is fun. This is nice. Um, of course, before that, there was some song which was very funny, but it became popular at that time called Just Chill. So Just that chill. song was popular. You know, one of, you talking about your songs reminds me of something. I was in an acting institute. This was back in 2009, mm -hmm. second half of 2009. And one of our exercises was <coughs> to look into the camera mm. and dance on, as in like we had to express it to the camera mm -hmm. and dance on Teri Or. Look into the camera. And be all Teri Or, Teri Or. Okay, so you're, su you're supposed to take the vibe of the song. And the camera's yeah. the girl, obviously. Yeah. And it's camera's not the like girl, some so that's the POV play. of the girl. And then okay. you have to <laughs> act it out. So it's just you talking about your songs just reminded me of that because I have done that to a camera in that acting institute. Oh, okay, this is really funny. I'm just imagining all these poor students in that camera <laughs> and following them. And I, what if, what if the, so the guy is obviously portraying Akshay's part and the camera's the girl? No, it was your interpretation or whatever you feel it like doing. It was your interpretation also, of the song. It was also being... This is very interesting. Being just free, just mm. just it was like a movement thing. It was and like also a just, movement class. Yeah, just like so. Basically, express. one could say that in a small way, I've had a, a, a fairly large hand in in helping you very, craft your, your very. skill. I'm so thrilled I'm to be to sitting with my guru over here today. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay, um, let's see what we should not play for you. Okay. I'm going to take a guess and say... Hey, Vicky. Okay. Uh, this is Abhishek. Hey, I just want to ask you, um, very interested to know that as actors, there's always one or several genres that, um, that really terrify us, that we feel that we can't do justice to, but still we want to kind of like take it off our bucket list. Keeping in mind the variety of work that you do and you continue to do, I really want to know is, do you have that one genre that really scares you? And if it is um, something that really terrifies you, is your approach to it that you want to do it and conquer it, or do you just stay away from it? So as a co-artist and as, an, uh, as a big fan of yours, I really want to know what is that one genre that scares you? I'm actually currently shooting for a film which is uh, in the horror genre. Before this, comedy was the genre that used to really scare me because I feel, uh, you know, comedy is that one sur. Either you get it right or you're completely off it. Mm. But... Horror is, I think, the trickiest genre to play with because, which I didn't know, mm. which I'm learning as I'm shooting for this film. Because when you're doing an emotional scene or a dramatic scene, you know that you've hit an honest note somewhere down the line. In comedy, also, you feel that either you've missed it or you've hit that note. But in horror, you never really, you always play acting. Yeah. You always play acting and you're always imagining. Okay, you know, this is the ghost, so this is this is what we have to imagine, and then there's going to be a team of VFX which is actually going to create what you gave that reaction to. And then there's movement, and then you have to create your own world. And all those elements are coming into play. So, uh, this is something that I was not prepared for. You know, mm -hmm. that, okay, it's always going to be that play act. I'm always going to know that I'm going to give, give this care moment. I'm always going to know that I am walking normally, and then there's going to be a sudden... Mm -hmm sound of the back, to which I have to react, which didn't actually happen, which I have to imagine and take that cue myself and then do that. Mm. And then also imagine the intensity of it. You know, that could be created later, but that intensity might not match the intensity that I had kept in my head. Mm. So all of that is a very tricky space. So I, I really want to, would want to explore it soon ahead. You know, not immediately, but soon ahead and then use this experience of mine into that and then take it forward. You know, so I guess it's horror now. Yeah, I do agree that that sounds like the toughest genre ever. I'm going to pick up self. Okay. In the last two years, you've emerged as a mature and confident individual who can hit it out of the park with a role like Babita Kumari in Zero. What enabled you to reach this place? 
I think I think what life brings to you, what life throws at you, um, pretty much everything that I imagined could not happen happened. You know, okay. all the things that you imagine, this should not happen, this should not happen. The things you try and guard and protect and keep, those were the, all the things that I was trying to focus on so much in protecting and keeping were all the things that disintegrated or, you know, did not work out or went away. And then I think it's that moment where you kind of are faced with everything you feared mm. and you realize that it's not so bad. <laughs> it's like the... It's it's like you had overhyped in your yeah, yeah you I think that's what that's what fear is right fear is mostly just an illusion it's never really unless the actual ghost in your horror film comes in front of you it's never really that the thing that you fear is that bad yeah sometimes you th you don't realize it yeah. at all until later and then you realize before you know it you, you you're in this whole kind of structure of something and. Um, it's not purely just creative, and it's not purely just your work, it's kind of all convoluted. And then when that kind of disintegrates, then you kind of come back to, after the unsettling phase, you come back to a place then again of not of feeling really fearless and not having so many um, kind of rules for yourself and so many things that you're living under. Yeah. And I think with that, um, with that kind of com came for me a new, uh, a kind of a renewed interest and excitement in what I was doing at my work. Because mm. I think for me, I, I went through a phase of, um, I, it's kind of like what you said, where I feel that when you're on set and when you're, when you're working, it takes, it consumes everything of you. I think there's very, very little left for anything and anyone mm. else. And if you don't really have everything to give, then I think you're going to be weak in those yeah. in those in those films or in that period of time. So I think just trying to find where is it that you feel that oh this is a place where I feel good about myself and I feel good being here. But did that happen while you were playing Babita or did that happen before and then you got into Babita? Mm. That for that particular role, I think Anand Rai was super for for Zero. He was always sure he wanted me to do that. Like he came to me about two and a half years before the film started. Wow. And I, so at that point, I was supposed to do both the roles. Oh, okay. It was a double role. And when he came back to me, I was like, Anand, so you took away half my role. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were like at loggerheads for a while, like, right. you know, in the nicest possible way. I was like, Anand, so no, 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 this. And he explained me his vision. He explained to me the way his vision had kind of changed. And of course, I think he's one of the best directors we have. And he was so clear and precise, you know, that... He was like, you're going to find it if you just, you know, kind of, if you just submit yourself to this process, Surrender completely. you're going to find it. It was a really hard process, though, because mm. when you're coming on set and mm. you're supposed to be drunk and brokenhearted and really distraught at a really low, you're vulnerable, you're at a loss, you feel right. very unhappy and you you have, you don't have, you know, your self-esteem is not on the highest thing and you're drunk. And I didn't want that to look fake. And mm. you can't really fake that. I you mean, can't. it's it's tough. It's tough if you're just going to completely just be out there to kind of switch it on and off. Right. So when we used to come on set, there used to be like an hour, an hour and a half that me and Anand sir would just sit and talk. Wow. Sometimes it was about something related to what we were doing. Sometimes it wasn't. But he always knew, you know, that, that's the brilliance of a good director. What nerve to touch. Yeah. And, yeah. He always knew which road to kind of, push me down, like kind of gently, 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 and then kind of just let it, mm. let it play out. The only tough thing was because of the CG, there mm. was long periods between each shot. So let's say, you know, they're doing, say even from a mid to a profile, sometimes that could be like hours. I think out of everything I've, I've done recently, that was something which really excited me. Like it was, it was really fun to do that. Do you think also because it became like kind of an outlet for you to express what you have inside to just do it through a character? Because that sometimes happens with me and I really like juice it out because I just have this garb of playing a character but I really want to like... For me now, I've, I've kind of understood it in a different way now which perhaps mm -hmm. I kind of had a different way of approaching things earlier but now I feel that whatever it is, mm -hmm. I, may, I personalize it in a very, very real way to me on my right. level. So right. it doesn't matter if something is sad, how is it sad to me personally Correct. from that lens. But I also just like the freedom. I like the freedom that he wanted. I like that that incorrectness of everything. Yeah. I just like the thing of, because also 
you're drunk, it also just allowed you to kind of just not have to do everything the right way. And that was... Yeah, be imperfect. Yeah, that yeah. for me was just the most liberating experience. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. So now I'm going to pick one of these for you. This one is industry. Okay. What have you learned about things one shouldn't do from the artists <coughs> around you? <laughs> That's a great one. Firstly, it's uh, uh, taking yourself as an actor too seriously and creating like this atmosphere that, oh my God, there's this serious actor on set who needs like, you know, this mm. kind of this isolated space on set, which actually kind of is a disruption to people around him or her doing their own jobs on set. You know, sometimes, I mean, you also have to take this into consideration that it's not only you who's making this film. It's a team of 200 people yeah. coming together and making this film. Yeah. It could be that light man sitting in that one corner at 20 feet height in that room. Also because of, Worked with amazing actors, Ranbir, Alia, Sanjay Mishraji. <clears throat> and they are so good with their lines, man. They are so good with their lines. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I've realized that the magic that happens that when you're just so prepared with your lines on set, that's amazing. So I guess, yeah, these two that are coming to my mind right now. What's the question, things you learned that you should not do? Yeah, should not do. So I shouldn't be ill-prepared with my lines when I come oh, on set. Like, like that's that. what I meant, yeah. But I wouldn't think that you're ill-prepared. I wouldn't think you've ever come on set without really knowing your script, like, backwards. Yeah, but see, as an actor, what I tend to do is also, I don't really mug up my lines in terms of exact words of those lines. Mm. What I do is, I try to mug up the thought process of the, of the character. Mm. Why, why is it that he's saying this line and then he shifts to that line? So if I know the thought, I will never forget the line. Mm. And even if that helps me improvise also because I know the thought. So I, it helps me say something from my end also. But mm. sometimes that is not the requirement of the character or not the space that that film is in. Like for example, Razi was not that. Mm. Razi, uh, in terms of that script, you had to say exactly the words that were written on the script. Because anything away from that would just change the sort of that character. You know, the space of that scene. Mm. So that's what I realized, yeah. So I think that now that we, um, well, I think we got through. We got, we did not too bad. We got through a fair amount. This is what's called the end tape. So I'm okay. assuming that there's um, going to be like some sort of judgment of what we've <laughs> done, maybe. Thank you, Katrina and Vicky. It's been a pleasure to get to know you both a little better. We look forward to seeing you on screen.